Hello everyone and welcome to the OR. Alrighty, so this is a basic airway anatomy training course. Now, why did I do that? Because I have not used this application in a while. And so I kind of want to just uh, refresh myself, get myself used to the bronchoscope again. Alrighty, mucus mayhem. A 21-year-old woman with cystic fibrosis has been admitted to the emergency room with a worsening productive cough and respiratory distress. She had been managing her disease with Dornay's Alpha, a mucus thinner, and chest physical therapy. She had missed several physical therapy sessions in the past two months. Her sputum was purulent and positive for chronic colonization with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. I actually used to have Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It took forever and a day to get rid of it, but we managed to actually decolonize me. It's actually pretty rare that you're actually able to get someone to wipe out Pseudomonas. Her cough persisted despite treatment with intravenous antibiotic and increased chest physical therapy. A chest x-ray was performed for further evaluation and a bronchoscopy is ordered. So we're here doing a clean out on this lady's lungs so that she can breathe again. Because with her lungs all clogged up like this, she can't breathe. Cotton catastrophe. 22 year old woman presents with chest pain and cough on exertion. After some questioning, she reluctantly acknowledges that she accidentally swallowed a cotton swab a few days before the visit. Interventional pulmonologist on call is not available. It is your job, aka my job, as the on call guy to take care of this and you can see on the chest x-ray there 
in her right bronchus is a freaking Q-tip. Object is out of the airway. Twenty eight year old amateur magician. Presented with a two month history of recurrent dry cough, low grade fever, and dyspnea. Primary care provider prescribed a course of antibiotics, minimal to no improvement. Underwent spirometry with a FEV1 of 80% predicted value, mild obstruction. Force vital capacity was normal. Colleagues are attending the ATS annual meeting, and it's my job to take care of this patient. It is clear from the chest x-ray that the person swallowed a pen cap and decided that she didn't want to uh, say anything. Object is visualized in the left branch. Go ahead and suction first. All right, so now we're dealing with a completely dry object. It is a sharp object, so this poses a slight problem. We have to very carefully manipulate this object out of the airway. We are not close enough. I, I'm very nervous. This case has always been one that makes me a bit nervous. Have a grip on the object. The object is pretty firmly lodged in there. We just got some upward mobility on the object. to have to go with a different approach. We're going to have to grab it from down here. And now we have to pay extremely close attention to basically use eyes in the back of our head to 
and hopefully not scratch up the airway. Upwards mobility has stopped. The object has rotated. We are in the main tracheal branch. The object has been removed. What kind of numb nuts eats a freaking pen cap? and then decides to not tell the doctor about it. So our next situation we're gonna be dealing with is bloody business. And uh, I have not ran this simulation in quite some time, so... That's kind of why my scores aren't all that high. They're pretty good though. Still three hearts. Oh yeah, I would definitely have that lady checked in for a psychiatric eval. Sixty-eight-year-old woman is admitted to the emergency room with paroxysmal cough and associated episodes of hematosis and intermittent bloody sputum. Continued approximately 15 days. She has a 40-pack a year smoking history. Diagnosed with COPD, requires two liters of home oxygen. We're the only pulmonary specialist on the floor. And so we've been paged down to the emergency room to determine the cause and treat the cause. So now we're going to do some cautery here. Okay, it's completed. So we just had to cauterize that one area of bleeding. Viral Vengeance is our next one. Fifty-three year old male with intermittent cough and dyspnea. Active smoker reports one bout of pink colored sputum a week before the current visit. Has a history of vocal cord growth surgically removed. We are on remote medical mission and we have been paged to the emergency room to take care of this situation. Left side clear.
Left side, deep scan, clear. She's some abnormal tissue looking here on the right side. Nope, that's normal. Hmm. Where is our issue here? Let's gather our bearings here. Go all the way out to the tracheal carina. Alright, I see these uh polyp boy whoa Human papilloma virus. Alrighty, hopefully the APC usage will have hopefully uh, minimized our risk of bleeding as we pull this HPV lump out of this man's lungs. This is a very big chunk. probably going to end up running out of time. The health percentage is 100%. The, uh, okay, well, just a little under 100% now, because we spent a lot of time looking down the left side of the lung when we're supposed to be looking at the right side. We've got pooling blood. to APC this tissue here. See, my hope was that I would be able to avoid having blood pooling by using the APC prior to the removal to kind of kill the tissue. I know I could have done way better at that. I think we're gonna go ahead and do that one once again. Reading a chest CAT scan is definitely a bit harder than reading a chest x-ray, so. All right, so we're gonna Again, I'm gonna go ahead and do early intervention APC usage here. Yep, 
if there's a medic in the chat that wants to give me some pointer or uh, disagree with me on the using the APC early on, let me know. I mean, frankly, I think that kind of cauterizing the tissue beforehand and trying to prevent uh, active bleed is probably, you know, prevention is better than the cure. Blood pooling, suction ready. Suctioning, wash out. Folks, get your HPV vaccines. You don't want your lungs to look like this. Alrighty, Carpenter's Conundrum. Oh, crap. This guy swallowed a nail. A 30-year-old carpenter is brought to the emergency room for acute onset shortness of breath and cough after inhaling an unknown object. The patient has no history of pulmonary difficulties. CTA of chest revealed no vascular involvement. RSI performed and ETT has been placed. You are a locum tenens at a small rural hospital. The situation is an emergency. There is no time to transfer the patient. A rigid bronchoscope is not available. Proceed to treat using flexible bronch immediately. Alright, so the problem we have here is that with something like a nail, it's a very sharp object and you can see that it is indeed lodged in this man's lung tissue. So first of all, we need to clean out all this mucus because this is going to lead to pneumothorax eventually if we don't clear it out. So we need to clean all this out. Next, we're going to have to very ever so carefully pull the nail out of this man's right side and pull it towards the left. We're likely going to need to quickly get the APC involved. tissue abrasion and okay all right all right all right it's fine oh no it's not fine it's not fine oh crap 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 i do not like this case at all ah oh 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 oh, oh. okay out it comes This is why you wear an N95 mask when you're working in carpentry. 
By the way, I got a new high score on that. A 31-year-old man has been in the hospital for 17 days following a serious traffic accident, recently taken off of ECMO, and is alert, but he has developed a cough and mild hematesis. Situation is emergent. Interventional pulmonologist is not available. Pulmonary surgeon, me, on call, will be taking care of the situation. where this kind of plastic would come from. Ow, 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 tissue abrasion. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Ah! Ah! Nope. This is definitely... Uh, <laughs> this is another one of the cases that is... Oh, oh, ow, fuck. This is a very hard case. No, 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 don't travel down into the lungs, you plastic whatever this thing is. I have no idea what that thing is, but whatever it is, I wish it never ended up in there. Whoa, 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 my uh, distal extension tool just got absolutely stuck. Suction that little bit of blood back. I think it's a uh, plastic on bilateral. Yep, there's a bit more blood there. I don't think we need to APC it though. This piece is in a bit of an easier position. Watch, I'm gonna say that and now I'm gonna frickin' curse myself with this thing. Yeah, I can't lift it off the surface of his lungs. Ow, fuck. And shit, shit, shit. Scratching the place up. (coughs) 
I've done better. Let's try that again. Let's get rid of these secretions. All right, instead of saying that this is an easy position, I'm gonna say, okay, this is an incredibly hard position and maybe I won't curse myself then. Nope, those are not gonna, nope, nope. Those are not gonna grab onto that that way. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna be forced to grab onto it like that. Crap. Ow. Ah! Dropped it. Ow. Five minutes does not last long for foreign body removal. I gotta get the suction. I gotta get the secretions out, otherwise the guy's gonna get infected. Tissue abrasion, tissue abrasion. Just no getting this one. Alright, we'll just move on. We'll try that case again another time. 41 year old woman admitted to the emergency department referred for bronchoscopic evaluation. Symptoms include a productive cough of several months in duration, low grade fever, two weeks duration, and lethargy. Before admission to the ED, she completed a seven-day course of levofloxin. Symptoms did not improve. Follow-up CXR shows persistent abnormality that suggests pneumonia. Chest CAT scan was performed for evaluation further. Patient denies hemoptysis. I ain't no guy who knows how to read a CT scan, but whatever's going on on that right side don't look right. Oh yeah, um... There's a... Hematoma. There's a mass inside of this lady's lungs that's blocking off an entire branch. We've got active bleeding. We're going to have to go back in there and uh, saline APC and clean out. Blood is pooling, but we have to get this uh, 
body out of the airway first. Ready to suction. very quickly to saline irrigation. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the mucus. Okay, it says to suction this mucus here, but there's no mucus there to suction. So I'm gonna just restart the case. Okay, so good news. We managed to use the APC to prevent bleeding. So there was no blood. Um, the APC did exactly what I wanted it to do. I hit the hemipetoma with the um, APC a bunch to, and I also hit the edge walls with it to make sure that there would be no bleeding, kind of pre cauterize the entire area. So now we just got to go back in and clean out. And now we withdraw. Oh yeah, new high score. Went from two stars to three. Sixty-five-year-old man, intermittently productive cough without hematosis, one month duration. Treatment for asthma was initiated by PCP after spirometry demonstrating mild obstruction. Productive cough persisted despite adherence with the asthma treatment regimen. His sputum is foul smelling and has a green gray color. That kind of screams viral.
Nothing down here on the left side. I've got mucus here on the right side. Oh, that's nice. This, folks, ow. This is why you don't want to eat fish improperly. Don't talk while you're eating fish. That is a very sharp object. Yeah, I knew we were going to have to APC it. Our control system just went, oh, crud. This is a very cramped area for this to be. Where's the blood pooling? Way the hell up there. This guy must be on heparin or something. Okay, that was running the clock to the very end, and that's going to end up being a fail. Or actually, no, it's just a no time bonus. See, that's the nice thing about this particular simulator, is you can take your time on things and just say, screw it to the time bonus. Yeah, I've done way better than that. <laughs> Let's try that again. I did not want that to rotate like that. Nope, that ain't gonna work that way.
Oh, shit! Alright, out we come. I hope we don't have to go through the... Good, we don't have to go through the branches. Definitely not the optimal removal path. I would have rather had it coming out vertically, but at least we were in the wide trachea instead of down below the carina when it went horizontal. Not bad, a little lower than what my last score was, but I'm just gonna accept it. I mean, I'm running on basically no sleep. So I, I guess this is realistic simulation of being a resident at a hospital. You know, you get really bad sleep when you're a resident at the hospital and you end up getting fucked over into having to do some of the weirdest shit. Alrighty, so this is probably one of my favorite cases in this simulator. A 19-year-old man runs into the ED, claiming that he has a man stuck in his lungs. Medical team calls for a psych evaluation. Psychiatric reports that they have no uh, reason to believe that he has a psychiatric problem. They run a CT scan, and you can easily see... Well, what do you know? Mr. 19-year-old adolescent dude has a man stuck in his lungs. This is the kind of shit that I would expect from a 5-year-old or a 10-year-old, maybe. More like a 3-year-old. So I'm, I'm not too sure about psychiatric finding. Uh, I am, I'm pretty sure this guy's like seriously mentally handicapped. I mean, if, if you're freaking eating Lego toys, then you got yourself some problems. Crap. I was kind of hoping I could get it all to come out in one piece, but no, that ain't gonna happen. It never does. Alrighty. Yeah, psychiatric will definitely be coming back after the procedure, because, I mean... You're 19 years old, you're eating Legos? Come on, man. Nope, that ain't gonna come out like that. I'm gonna have to... Yank the arm off the toy. Alrighty, we got an arm coming up.
torso coming up with the other arm attached. We got a pair of uh, Lego legs still remaining. I've been faster before, but I'm not going to bother trying to go super fast. Sanguine Scourge. A 67-year-old man presents for palliative bronchoscopic intervention. He was diagnosed with stage 3B, non-small cell lung cancer, squamous cell carcinoma, with discrete Contralateral metastinal node involvement. CT and PET scan show distal metastasis. A diagnosis of stage 5 disease confirmed. Uh, stage 4 disease. Correction. He presents with twice recurrent post obstructive pneumonia, progressed to chemotherapy, and is considering partaking in a clinical trial. That whole CT scan looks like a whole... This is a hairy situation. Alright, where are you, squamous cells? Not over here. over there okay there we go that's squamous cell Alright, so, you see how this thing is blocking up the entire, holy shit, that's a big motherfucking thing. Holy shit, boy, oh my god, dang. Alright, let's APC the crap out of this thing. I'm not sure where it's attached to the lung tissue here. I think I see the point of attachment is uh, right there. you trust me with a bronchoscope inside your lungs if there was nobody else in the hospital all right we got active bleeding there the squamous cell has been apc'd out so the bleeding is likely minimal um
Thanks, Peter. That's nice to know. Okay, where, where'd we go? Frick, frick, frick. I think we're on the left side. There we go. There's the act of bleeding. Saline, flush out. Suction. suction here Alright, so I think it definitely helped to APC it quite a bit. Obviously, there's no way of totally preventing bleeding, but APCing the crap out of the uh, squamous cell is a good idea as long as we don't touch the lung tissue. That's healthy tissue there, don't want to touch that. And that's exactly what I didn't want to do. I just toasted some of his healthy tissue. Okay, so the entire squamous cell has been APC'd out. So now we're going to go ahead and yank it out now. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a better... Oh, crap. And it came out of the forceps. Yeah, that was kind of weak sauce. Not terrible. Dude survived. Dude will end up living. But yeah, that uh, squamous cell stuff is difficult to deal with. Guess what? 19-year-old man runs into the emergency room. A man's in my lungs again! You immediately recognize him as the patient who previously inhaled a tiny toy. Given the patient's aspiration history, a chest x-ray and CT scan is ordered and there are indeed Lego parts inside of him. All right, this dude, basically, you know how they have the gun offender registry and they like ban somebody from ever buying a gun again? This guy needs to be put on the Lego registry where, you know, like he goes to a toy store and they just pull up his name in the computer and they're like, yeah, sorry, sir. You're on the Lego blacklist. We can't sell you Legos. Um, we actually aren't allowed to sell you any toys with small parts that can be choking hazards. Oh, come on, we're right in the middle of the main branch. 
This thing is slippery and covered in mucus. Suction. Applying more suction. Oh wow, this is way deep in the We gotta get this thing out right now because with how low inside of the lung that is okay okay those legs I did not want those to do that but okay that that's okay no he's not up to no good he's just he just should not be in possession of Legos Alrighty, so the final piece I think might have actually been a uh, bouncer that went into the other side of his lung. Yep, there's mucus here. That's evident that there's probably been infiltration. Yep, there's the arm. Three hearts on that one, new high score. Alrighty, now we're gonna be doing some COVID-19 cases. Speaking of COVID-19, I was questioning if I had it. No, I do not. I just have some sort of allergies thing or a cold. I've already um, done all the COVID rule out stuff for myself. All right, so we have a diagnostics case here. So we're going to ask the patient, we're going to do some interview. We're going to ask the patient about aggravating factors, cough, and exposures to other people. No travels, no exposures, and no drinking. Dry cough. Started the second day. It 
it's worse in the mornings. Something stinks of upper respiratory infection, but... Let's get a uh, respiratory viral panel. I'll actually get a sputum culture and we'll also, while we're getting that sputum culture, we'll get onset and duration info. Sputum culture negative. COVID-19 test. COVID negative. This is really starting to stink of us that upper respiratory infection, so I'm going to call it. Won't let me call it. So, uh, let's see here. Respiratory virus panel. I have action points remaining, so I may as well use them. Let's get general symptomology. Positive for adenovirus. So that is a type of upper respiratory infection. I'm not sure why it's not giving me the diagnosis button. Asthma exacerbation. I think we analyze a PFT for that. Alrighty, asthma exacerbation is eliminated. We have 25 turns remaining. Upper respiratory infection confirmed. Case complete. Ah, weak sauce. Wish I uh, got more stars on that one. Fifty nine year old male with cough.
got the COVID-19 test. COVID-19 positive. I've gotten to the point where I can smell COVID-19 from a mile away. 58-year-old male patient presented to the emergency room with generalized body aches and fever for the past few days. Clinic has run out of essentials, including viral testing kits. I swear this start this smells like community acquired pneumonia. Increased interstitial markings. COVID-19 is ruled out. <coughs> I think it's the flu. Yep. catastrophe 67 year old female patient presenting to the ED with a history of diarrhea
diarrhea. What a weird way to start with things here. I want to know all about your symptoms, when this thing started, and I want to do a pulmonary exam. Slightly feverish with headache. Get the infectious diseases PCRs. Negative. Only the left lower lobe. That's smelling like flu. So let's do a respiratory viral panel. Um, <laughs> do a cardiac exam. Negative for all. Grab a sputum culture. Unable to obtain any sputum. Alright, now we've got no turns remaining, so now we've got to call it, it's either pneumonia or pneumonia. Failed community acquired pneumonia. Thanks, that's good to know. I'll actually remember that. HIV negative automatically rules out uh, pneumocystic gerovici. By the way, uh, welcome aboard, Psych and MD. So we're gonna just go ahead and kind of cheat here and uh, call this one community acquired because we already know this particular case.
Ain't gonna get many stars for that one. Take my breath away. Here we go. 51-year-old African-American female presents the emergency department with recently developed fever, shortness of breath, cough, and chest pain. Oh, boy. What is that smell? Smells like COVID. Up your schnoz with a long Q-tip. Oh, dang, really? Okay, well, at least that rules out COVID. The chest pain was really uh, kind of a screaming COVID and the temperature and the heart rate, blood pressure's kind of high though. Alrighty, let's get chest pain. Symptomology Pulmonary exam Two days ago And she's never experienced something like this before Dry cough, chest pain, fever, and chills. Yeah, it's really cool to actually see a full-fledged doctor watching a stream here. Coarse crackling sounds in both lower lung fields. Get an x-ray done. Medical history, please. Yeah, I'm kind of astounded. Feel free to follow the channel if you like it. I do a lot of medical simulations. I do some Call of Duty here and there. I do a ton of flight simulation. All right, I'm gonna get a viral test panel done here. And who were you exposed to? Negative for all. TB is eliminated. Pulmonary embolism is beyond unlikely. <coughs> this will eliminate the pulmonary embolism doing a CTPE protocol. Evidence of pulmonary embolism. Image showing mixed interstitial and alveolar densities along dependent peripheral region of the lungs with sparing of central regions. Well, bingo. Pulmonary embolism it is. Uh, 
Hey, I got an extra star on that one. Alrighty, time to do a non-small cell lung cancer workup. 65-year-old patient formerly smoked for 20 years, has a mass located in their right bronchus. Obtain biopsy to confirm diagnosis of malignancy and conduct biomarker testing. I kind of want to get biopsy samples from three different areas of the tumor. I forget what movie that's from, but yeah, it's a tumor! I like to get samples from different areas of the tumor. Now we do the biomarkers testing. Alrighty, so we're looking at Kras, because that's like the uh, number one lung cancer. There it is, Kras G12C. I actually participate in folding at home, and we actually are working with the Kras G12C uh, genomic data. We're working uh, simulations through this massive global computing grid to hopefully find a cure or, you know, hopefully find a way to stop this Kras mutation from occurring. This is where I've always had some sort of glitches happen, so we'll just exit out here. 
back to case selection. That's why the biomarker is a uh, complete. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, also, shout out to Dr. Sykin for that piece of advice on pneumocystic gyrovechi. Um, now I know something that I will forever carry with me in my knowledge. Um, pneumocystic gyrovechi is only in HIV patients, so someone who doesn't have HIV will never have pneumocystic gyrovechi. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will probably be back in a little while for another stream of some sort if I'm feeling up for it. Otherwise, I will be signing off for the night. Uh, you guys stay well, stay safe, and I will see you all tomorrow.